Continuing here. So um, about just finishing up on the elitist thing. Remember, uh, you can't be a little bit elitist. It's like being a little bit pregnant, okay? You can't believe in inequality a little bit, okay? Because then the whole thing just it rushes in and overcomes. You have no standing, okay? That's the point I'm trying to make is that by default, if you are a little, if you are believing in inequality even a little bit, you are an elitist, okay? That's it. And these are the people, these elitist types, these are the hypocrites. These are the people that want to live by a double standard. So you've got to reject it whole cloth and say, no, I want nothing to do with that belief system. So you don't embrace it. You reject it every time it comes up in any way through life, in, in society. You reject it. You say, that's ungodly. It's not, it's not that uh, this is something that, that is okay to any measure, and yet it's all around us. Okay, our, our, our society is pervasive with nonsense, maddening nonsense that makes no sense, the none at all, okay? All these people that get paid so many, you know, all this money, these big numbers, and they're useless pustules on society. I mean, we don't need them. That's the point, that people doing regular, everyday jobs, farm workers, factory workers, people building houses out there, these don't take great degrees or anything people washing dishes people that scrubbing toilets these are the people i mean the, jesus said look if you seek to be great you must become servant of all that's all i'm trying to get across to people to understand how ugly any hint of elitism is to god and to reject it whole cloth and say no i am not embracing any kind of of anti-egalitarian beliefs that's it it's an anti-egalitarian belief to believe that a little bit of it's okay, a little imbalance is okay, a little inequality is okay. It has nothing to do with individuality. We've all, we're all fantastically individual. There's no way we can lose our individuality. Okay, but the point is, is that uh, when it comes to equality, that's God deciding that. If he decides that he loves us all equally and he says the least of men is me, okay, essentially that's what Jesus said, the least of men is me. Then you know what you see. You know where, where's your basis? Where, who are you going to say told you this is okay or that's okay? You can't do it. We're all on our own. It is every man for himself at the end of the day. We're all going to stand one on one before our Creator. We're going to answer our for, for our beliefs and our lack of beliefs, our values and lack of values. Okay, that's it. And God has the power to throw body and soul into hell. And that's something we've all got to take very seriously. This is where the fear of God comes in. You say, do you really want to do that thing? Now that you're educated and you know what Jesus said, he said that it's better to have not been born than to harm a child. Better to be thrown in the depths of the sea. Okay. Are we going to reject that teaching and say, no, I think I know better. Now I'm going to go out and harm a child. You see, I mean, where's that going to get you? Con nothing but contempt from God and man. That's it. Why would you want to do it? It's not that it can't possibly be forgiven. It can, because the only unforgivable sin out there is this blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. But who wants to live with any unnecessary sin in their lives? I don't. I got enough of it as it is. I believe me, I've got my struggles as a single man. It's not always easy, okay? Because it's not normal to be a single man. It's, you know, ask any guy that knows. I mean, he knows what's normal is to have a wife, a companion, a partner. This is very biblically based, this, this belief. But look how many single people they, there are out there in the world. Half the women over 50 are single. Half. That's the last statistic I saw on this. And 25% of men are single over 50. So that's a big deal. That's a huge swath, a huge chunk of the population. And you could bet a lot of this has to do with money. Like this guy killing his wife. You can bet that had a lot to do with money because she was divorcing him or she had divorced him or something. And there was a lot of money involved. So maybe there was a prenup or something. But there's money in, in mind. Is People are going to lose. When you know when you're in a relationship, in a marriage, things are easier for you. At least even if you're splitting the bills, it's half as, as hard as being on your own. If you got to pay for a, a studio apartment between uh, one or two people, what are you going to choose? You're going to want two. So money is involved in all the evil. Just like Jesus said, the love of money is a root of all the evil. Not some of the evil, all of the evil. 
There was a guy right here in Chico on Highway 99 here just uh, this past week. His uh, trailer, he was towing a trailer, uh, just like a utility trailer. It looked like the kind you could um, tow a car with, uh, one of these kinds. It's just kind of streamlined, just the bed, the chassis type trailer. And uh, it got loose from the hitch and it went across across a couple lanes of traffic it went into the oncoming traffic and it went right into a guy's car 48 year old man was killed when this uh, trailer came loose and somehow you can bet there's money involved that well why don't we have a divider in the highway okay that's one question oh because of money right why aren't we fixing the potholes because of money why do we have all these annoying four-way stops? Because it costs too much to make a roundabout, okay? See, it's all money. This is what we're told. We're all believing that this is what it's all about because the, the, the waters have been muddied and bloodied intentionally by these evil people. And we don't know up from down half the time. People don't know what the hell's going on. Money, money. They, money drives everything, right? It's all about money. But I tell you, fiscal prudency dictates that we would just simply end desperate poverty, extreme desperate poverty, and we could save bundles. Your taxes could go down until you're not paying taxes anymore. Nobody cares. The tax man doesn't care about money. He's fine. Everybody's fine. Everybody's doing what they want in life with their lives. That's the reality we could have, folks. That's it. And that's what I really want to get across to people is that it's all lies, heaped upon lies, fraud upon fraud. And to the nth degree, we've got to get it. We've got to understand that this system is rife with fraud. Okay. And nothing makes sense. So it's no wonder our heads are spinning trying to make sense of it all. We want to. We really want it to make sense. We want to believe somehow we can fit into this system. You know, and that's it. And we can find happiness in this world. But the only way I know of is trusting in God. So I feel very sorry for somebody that doesn't have even an ounce of faith. I mean, that's all there is. That's my only hope. Because other than that, I'm, I'm pathetic, pitiable, and weak. I'm mortal. I'm going to be dead just like everybody else. I got to give it up, man. Everything I've been familiar with since I was can remember is going to be gone, snatched away from me. And you think I don't have the fear of God in my soul? So the fear of God is a good thing. Okay, but the love of God, too, and appreciation and gratitude, knowing God is a holy, good God and holy with a W. I mean, he's completely good and a holy God and wants the best for us like a good parent. That's the best way to think about God is our father and our mother. God is God. God is male and female. That's why the, the, the male-female human dynamic is so important to understand. We, we're, we, we can't get away from each other. We need each other. That's it. That's the only way the, cre the, the creation continues to procreate. This is the only way God can manifest himself and grow and expand and create all these little extensions and expressions of himself. So it is a very cosmic thing. It cannot have happened accidentally. It's ridiculous. And more and more, the intellectual scientists that are honest out there are agreeing. They say it's ridiculous. Things could have not happened accidentally. Things tend to decay more. Okay, they don't, they don't get more and more intricately uh, dependent upon each other and the organs, like in the organs in a body. It just doesn't happen. A motor doesn't build itself with all its vast array of different components that are necessary to keep it running properly. It doesn't happen. So it's nonsense to believe there's not a God. So that's the basis to have a little bit of faith and just say, God, if it's true, help me. Change me. That's what I do all the time. Help me to cope. Uh, and help me to just want the best for everybody, to love even my enemies, to be everybody's friend in that sense. Because you are. If you love even your enemies, how can any man detest you with any justifiability? He can't. And that's a beautiful thing. At least you know you, you, you may be hated because you stand up and tell the truth and you expose evil whenever chance you get. But you know that when people hate you, it's unwarranted. It's undue. You're being hated without a cause, and so that's good. It helps you cope. Say, well, I'm not going to hate back. I'm going to love back. I'm going to say, God, they're in your hands. You, they, you own them. So change their heart. Change their mind. Make them not hate me. Make them see that, look, you're the one that's being insane. You're illogical. You're unscientific. You're unreasonable. 
And this is the truth. This is the way it should be. And this is what's coming. So you need to ready yourself for the good guy to win this battle ultimately. Because that's what I'm talking about here. The good guy will prevail. And the good guy is Jesus Christ. The good guy is God. The good guy are the holy angels. The good guys are the, the, the human beings that hunger and thirst for righteousness to be achieved, accomplished, to be realized upon the earth. For us all to be free. That's what we're after. That's very biblically based. And monetary freedom is one of those things. Financial freedom. Satanic freedom. I need to be free from Satan's hold. And all his minions out there, the witting and unwitting out there, that just are fear-driven. They do what they do because, and it goes against their conscience. They justify it. They rationalize it. They bury their head in the sand. They prescribe to the philosophy that ignorance is bliss. But that will only work so long. You know, they'll, they'll say, oh, well, so-and-so told me, right? You're not, that's not going to fly. When you stand before God one-on-one, -on -one, none of us are going to be able to use that excuse. None of us. So just remember that. Okay, when, when understanding this idea of living by the grace of God and not by the letter of the law, because the law destroys. We need to live by the letter. Jesus said, I did not come to destroy the law, but to fill it full, to fulfill the law through his grace, through his great mercy that reaches to the heavens. And this is what we need to preach to other people. This is the good news about God, that you really can't die. Life is everlasting. Talk about what God's intent is for people, what he wants, his nature, that he's like a very good parent. He's the one that taught every good parent out there how to be like they are. This is what we should do. This is what we need. This is bringing people the good news, the grace the mercy, and we need to reflect that in our own lives to people, that grace and mercy. And uh, But sometimes people de do need to be confined. I, I am a proponent of confining. I mean, in the, in the back of the day, Jesus, I mean, they used to confine people. He found these people that they called them demon-possessed, and they were chained hand and foot sometimes. And sometimes they could break. They had this superhuman strength. They could break those chains. Okay, but they believed in confining people, and it's the same way today. You've got to confine some people. They're not safe to be out on the streets. But I don't believe in the concept of punishment. So, no, I don't believe in capital punishment. I think that's cruel and inhuman. If you're going to do it, do it the way Moses did it. Do it spontaneously. I mean, a, mer a lynch mob is much more merciful, but don't make people live under the death penalty. I mean, how do you know how much they thought about what they did? They were demon-possessed. They were out of their minds. Why would I plan this murder of somebody? I mean, of course you weren't in your right mind. Duh. That's why God can forgive, because people weren't thinking. If they were, they wouldn't have done that heinous thing. Okay? None of us would have chosen to be sinners. We would have rejected the knowledge of good and evil if we knew the implications therein. What a drag, what a curse, what a pain in the ass and the death and the disease and the de destruction. All the misery that has ensued from this knowledge of good and evil. So we need the grace of God. And, and that was paid for. When Jesus hung on the cross, he was paying a ransom for our sins. He bought them. Okay, so there's a lot of baggage on God's shoulders, on the shoulders of Jesus. And it belongs to all of us. We're all responsible for murdering Jesus to some degree. Because it was the evil inside us that let this happen. And it's the evil still in our hearts. Even if it's the righteous people rejoicing in the destruction of the wicked, that's evil in the sight of God. You're evil. You've got to understand that you can be evil and not know it. That mob mentality. Well, he's my, my team is ahead. So, you know, that's bad for your team that they're dying out there. When, hey... If you could see in the hearts of some of these uh, these rebel fighters, who knows? I mean, maybe God loves some of what they believe too. Okay, I mean, you don't know. I mean, why why this great hatred for the West that these people have? What is it? What 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 drives them? Do they hate it because they hate usury? This is what they've been trained in, trained in these Muslim cultures is to hate usury. They hate it. They don't want to be enslaved, basically. They're smart enough to understand that. They have faith. These are devout people. Forget the religious thing, okay? But these are people that care about doing the right thing. And they know that the wrong thing is to, to roll over, okay? To acquiesce to what the the whims are of these evil rulers. Okay, that's why they get these theocracies pop up, and they're very powerful theocracies like we saw in Iran with the overthrow of the Shah. 
okay? And then they take over because the people are righteous. They, so there is, uh, that's my point is that I'm trying to convey to people, is that the Muslim people are devout and righteous people. And these a lot of these people that sympathize with these freedom fighters and all this, look, their motivations can be different. Like John McCain, oh my God, I mean, what is wrong with that man? There was a time when I genuinely liked him because he said stuff that made sense. Now he's out of his mind. He's like, what, where are you coming from, man? I mean, you can't support the overthrow of Bashir al-Assad when you know that these guys are 100 times worse. They're killing soldiers, cutting the heads off Christians and eating their organs. 